we are back in the garage working on our waste oil burning water heater version 2. In the last video we finished quite a bit of our prep work for the tank. We were able to get all of the paint removed from the sides. We got the tank cut in half. We got our door cut out. We also managed to get our heat exchanger uh, temporarily mounted in the top half of the combustion chamber. And so with that we are going to continue with our fabrication and hopefully we can get pretty much everything taken care of in this video. The first thing on our agenda for today is to get a set of hinges fabricated as well as a latch for the door. Once we complete that, we are going to move on to backing this the connection point here with some flat bar and then uh, connecting the top and bottom half of the combustion chamber together again. little update here. I finished welding the outer ring around the top of the tank. That was easier to do that first. After I got that welded in, I finished backing the door seam and that made it a lot easier so I could just kind of set the door into the opening and then I didn't have to kind of struggle to get the hinges aligned. That worked out really well. And so everything is kind of coming together pretty good. Uh, the hinges work very nicely. No binding whatsoever. Now I need to come up with another latch just to keep this closed and we should be done with the door and we will then move on to getting the top part of the oil burner to sit down onto this rim. Probably drill and tap some holes into this so I can use some just some quarter inch bolts to thread in and hold everything together. Well, I've made some good progress. I managed to get the uh, heat exchanger coil cut short and then I've been trying to get everything fit inside of here so that I have enough room uh, to get these compression fittings on and uh, they also have to kind of go through the side here so it's all kind of timely to be working on uh, this rim area of the, uh, the waste oil burning water heater at this time. So. I just gently bent this uh, lower tube by hand. Uh, bending the stainless is a pain in the ass, but um, I was able to get it kind of formed how I like it. And so what we're gonna do now is just use a drill to uh, cut a hole into here and we'll just kind of make a little U-shaped uh, cutout. One for there, one for there. And then basically this can just set straight down into here. We don't have to worry about these fittings they can all be done up beforehand and once it just gets set in we tighten these bolts in place and the heat exchanger installation will kind of be done. I'm going to grab the drill bit we're going to drill these out right now uh, then we can go ahead and get the fittings done up we can even wire this heat exchanger onto this holding bracket and try and get it uh, finished up. Well, I managed to get the heat exchanger coil with the 90 degree compression fittings and I've just used these little pieces of uh, tubing as stubs for right now, but everything is fitting together. So we have uh, inlet, outlet, I think, and we have the coil uh, mounted inside, as you can see there. So it's looking really good. And uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with how the the fitment of everything worked out. We've got a nice tight fit around where these uh, tubes come through the side of the uh, combustion chamber. So everything is working out really well. Uh, I would say that uh, with that being done, uh, all we need to do is just throw some quarter inch bolts in through these holes here. That will lock the two halves together. That uh, basically completes that work. The next step will be to get the 
the bottom part, the air inlet piece, I'm gonna have to cut a piece out, machine it on the lathe, and we can get it welded into here. And then the other uh, task to do is to get the flue cut to length so that we have, as you can see there, there we are, you can see it inside, you can see a little bit of that heat exchanger coil. We're gonna cut it so that it is about three inches from the bottom of this little pot here. And that should be about all there is to getting this thing fabricated. flue welded to the top half of the combustion chamber and I've got the inlet welded to the bottom part and so that is more or less done. I am going to need to come up with a plan now for the gap underneath of the propane tank. So again I would like to introduce some stability so that uh, this doesn't kind of tip over. The base is kind of narrow but more importantly it's kind of hard to see there. There is virtually no air gap when we are using the propane tank as it is. So we need to find a way to elevate it so that we can get proper airflow. And I think to do that, we're gonna use the same technique. I'm gonna go grab another automotive rim out from my uh, little storage yard and we will make a nice base for it. to try and use this refractory cement, this high temperature stove and furnace cement to line the interior of the combustion chamber, both bottom and top half, so that we can focus more of that heat energy into the actual combustion chamber and direct it across the heat exchanger rather than having it all radiate out the sides of the actual burner. The next step before we actually go to assemble any of this, uh, I've done some testing and Applying that refractory cement to uh, bare steel, uh, it really doesn't have great adhesion. But if you take a grinder to it and you rough up that surface, once you apply that cement to it, it actually sticks really well. And so, so well in fact that I, I was hitting this with a hammer to try and knock it loose and it has bonded quite well to the actual steel where I ground it down. The tricky part here is I'm going to have to try and grind down or prep most of this interior surface uh, and that as best I can using the grinder. It's going to be a little bit tough with that flue in there now. In hindsight, I'm realizing, oh, maybe I should have waited to uh, before I welded that in, but we'll deal with that uh, as it is now. The next step, like I said, the fabrication is done. We got to get a layer of this in. Once this is in, it has to set up for 24 hours. And once it's set up, then we have to gradually increase the temperature so I'll likely be using a propane burner instead of the waste oil burner to do the first heating. We'll do it without the actual heat exchanger in there so we can get all of this refractory cement set up ready to go. Once we've fired it for the first time it turns this kind of rock hard and it's good to go. We can then get everything installed in its final position and go for a test burn. All right well I am done for today. I did get the refractory cement uh, spread along the interior of the uh, combustion chamber. I found the best way to, to do that was actually just to thin down the cement a little bit with some water, mix it in the container that it came in, and then I just used my hand to spread it out on the inside of the, the tank here. And really, I don't think there's a tool that would be uh, better for the application here. It's just, it's such an odd shape inside there that uh, to get you know, the curvature and get the, the you know, the, the bottom there where it kind of uh, curves down to, to get the cement to really form to that shape with a tool just wouldn't work out very well. But using your hand is uh, definitely recommended. Um, so I did get this lower half done. It's going to take a little bit of cleanup once it dries, but that should not be an issue. I got the door coated as well. So hopefully that that will be able to, uh, that will be able to retain a little bit more of the heat and direct it in towards our heat exchanger, which is over here. 
this is the top of our combustion chamber. It, uh, it looks pretty good as well. Again, I used my hand to kind of spread out that uh, cement so that it has a nice even coat. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I did take a couple minutes to attach the heat exchanger to the uh, little pot here. I used some stainless steel wire and just kind of wrapped it around a bunch of times. So it is uh, fairly secure. I would say that's a good way to hold it in place without really getting into any other kind of difficulty fabricating anything. But uh, overall, I think that's where I'm going to end this video right now. In the next one, we will uh, look at getting the burner assembly installed. Uh, we will get this thing uh, heated up. We will cure the cement for the first time. And then we can actually get the heat exchanger installed and give it a test run. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like. Uh, also appreciate if you could subscribe. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.